Hey everyone, I'm James with Korg here with the all new SQ64 Polyphonic Sequencer. Let's dive in. The SQ64 represents a massive step forward in MIDI and control voltage sync and sequencing. Whether you're a modular, analog synth, or software user, or any combination of the three, no other product offers this level of connectivity, ease of use, and quality. So whether you're a Quark synth owner, a uh, modular synthesizer owner, uh, analog synth user, DAW recordist, whatever the case may be, any combination of those, there's really no product on the market that could deliver what the SQ64 can as far as control voltage, uh, MIDI, and sync. Um, the first thing that you'll notice on the SQ64 is that it has four dedicated tracks. The first three tracks have mod, pitch, and gate each. So there's three times modulation, three times pitch, and three times gate. The D track we'll get to in just a moment as we move along, but just to show you what we can do here, I've got a basic modular setup here. So you can follow along. Blue is doing pitch. The green is doing the gate, which is gonna turn the envelope on. And then the yellow is kind of like just the signal path. So we have this basic sequence running here. And I want to point out that this is a 64 step sequence. That's right, every track has up to 64 steps and you can just change those on the fly. Um, if I do that right now, for example, you can see I'm getting visual feedback here of how long my track is. And what's also really cool, you notice that we're not locked into 16 steps or 32 steps or what have you. You can do odd times, which means that you could do polymeters and polyrhythms which is also really cool, you know, putting track against track and having them in different uh, counts. Now, in addition to that, there's several modes uh, that you could use to change how your notes are being played back. So if you go into the shift, you've got double time, half time, quarter time, so on. Um, there's also things you could do around how the track plays back. So there's reverse, and that's per track. You've got bounce, which will go back and forth, stochastic, and random, which changes around the notes that are sequenced in different ways. And still, even while I'm in the shift mode, you can see it's showing me which notes are actually playing. So there's a lot of visual feedback on this product, which is also what makes it really, really cool. No matter what you end up doing, you're still seeing everything that's going on. So here, I've added another set of control voltage via track two. If I go here, I can see my pitches on the screen for every button I hit, same as any of the other tracks. You can also see your gates. So I could turn parts on and off. I could make it, you know, less busy or more busy. and so on and so forth. I can also do that for part C, um, except I've run out of oscillators. As I said, part D is a little different. This is a drum sub, uh, and what this actually is, is eight triggers, or eight gate outs, and then also eight MIDI outs. So what that means is, is that you can drive different triggers to different modules or different MIDI sources. In this particular case, I've got three drum modules in, in the uh, rig here. Uh, I'm using green to get them over there, and this is the signal. Um, but the really cool thing is just focus right here. Um, I'm going to trigger this kick, snare, and hi-hat module with the trigger outputs. All along the while, it's important to also point out that um, everything that you're doing is showing up here with its own dedicated LED. And you're going to see those gates light up as I start to put them on the grid. So once again, 16 actual triggers, um, individual eight here, and then an individual eight on MIDI out. So I'm going to go with the first one, which is going to make my kick. This can also be up to 64 steps. I'm gonna keep it really simple for now. I'm gonna go into my drum. And so on and so forth. That could all be changed on the fly, of course. You could also mute. Now that we've got a bunch of parts going on. Now 
Now, I also mentioned that each of the first three parts has three dedicated voltage outputs. You have pitch, of course, and gate, which we've been using. But then you also have mod. And mod is super cool uh, because that will send different amounts of control voltage to anywhere you'd basically like. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to send it to the uh, base module to manipulate the sound. I'm also going to send it to the filter. Um, just follow the red cables, and that's going to be our modulation. I'm using modulation A and modulation C. Uh, when you go into the modulation, um, you can see very clearly that there is um, different amounts of lighting on each step. And the reason that there's different amounts of lighting is because it's graduated lighting. The higher the amount between 0 and 127, or the higher the voltage that's being sent out, the more the light lights. So once again, in being step with how visual this product is, it does the same thing. Here, if I push this, I'm at 109. As I back it down, the light's going to dim. It's going to dim more. It's going to dim more. And this gives you a visual about of what's going to happen when you actually plug this in. So mod A, I'm going to bring here to the base, and we're going to see how that gets manipulated. Modulation C is a little simpler. I've got 16 steps here in the modulation. Again, if I back down, it gets darker on the step. If I bring it up, it gets lighter. I'm going to use that to manipulate the filter. And you can see right there the modulation that's happening. A lot of possibilities here. Um, really super cool as far as the way you can manipulate control voltage. Um, you know, we haven't even scratched the surface on MIDI yet, but certainly there as well. You remember, you still have the eight parts of trigger out. You also have um, a dedicated in and two outputs here for MIDI. So imagine this all being controlled by your DAW. Pretty cool. Now another really cool feature on the SQ64 is of course our audio sync. Audio sync being Korg's proprietary uh, sync tape technology. It's really cool because it really creates an environment and does it in a really easy way. Basically, um, any product that has the sync in and out can be synced to one master source, and that's without a whole bunch of different MIDI cables or a big complex MIDI interface. In this particular case, it's always a eighth inch cable. I'm using the orange cable, so it's a little bit more visual there. So you're going sync out to sync in here. And of course, that could be chained out to in, out to in, out to in. That's on Volcas, Minilog XD, Monolog, Electribes, and even the NewTek NTS1. So again, anything with audio sync in and out can now be synced to anything else very easily. It could be synced to the sequencer. It could be synced to your DAW. In this particular case, it's really cool because you're syncing up a modular system with a sequence to a Volca. So it's kind of like you know, bringing two worlds together, and this is what it looks like. Took the drums out of here. Perfect sync. In addition to all of these great features, you also have this great build quality. SQ64 is a all aluminum chassis, super solid knobs, nice rubber buttons. Each one is backlit. Of course, as you can see, everything on the panel is backlit. You get a really, really sturdy machine that will go into your backpack uh, anywhere you really want to take it. It's a great unit for um, live, for in your studio, and all coming in at about an inch thick as well. So nice and sleek, fits on a desktop really nicely. And that is the SQ64. So for more information on the SQ64 polyphonic sequencer, please contact your preferred Korg dealer or check out Korg.com. I'm James with Korg, and I will see you again soon.